everyone. Welcome to ISSA Talk. I'm Erin Mahoney, VP of Product over here at ISSA. And you may not know this, but I love corrective exercise. It was the first course, uh, I had taken many courses after I became a personal trainer, and it was the first one that I was in love with reading about the anatomy and the physiology and how this all works together. Um, and what I also love is making sure that I have the leg and glute strength to walk with my weighted vest every day, as recommended by our very special guest, one of two. The first one is Dr. Chad Waterbury. Welcome today again, Chad. Hi, Aaron. I'm glad to be here. So while Chad might not uh, introduce himself, but uh, he is an expert in his industry. He is a doctor of physical therapy, and he is at the University of Southern California doing what he does best, corrective exercise. Then we also have another very special person here. That is Jenny Scott. Hey, Jenny. Hi, Erin. Now, I love talking to Jenny, but she's here today because she was the primary contributor for ISSA's Glute Specialist course. And as if that's not enough, she walks the walk. Um, she is also a national level uh, fitness and wellness competitor, which is amazing, Jenny. And she's still a personal trainer as well. So she's doing all of it. I'm not sure how you have the time, um, but thank you so much for coming, Jenny. I'm always inspired by what you do every single day. Um, and I'm really looking forward to getting inspired again by the both of you. We're talking about corrective exercise. We're talking about glutes, how they go together. But specifically today, we're talking about injury prevention. And I'm about ready to hand it over to you, Chad. We said it before in one of our previous uh, chats that corrective exercise is kind of like fitness fortune telling. So uh, from your perspective, Chad, what's the classic thing that you can see with clients that would indicate that there's something going on with their glutes? Um, the classic thing would be knee valgus. So that's when the knee buckles in. So you can imagine if you see someone jump up and land and their knees buckle together. Uh, that's the classic thing. And it might be both legs, like a jump, as I just described, or it might be just one leg. It might be they're doing a reverse lunge. When they step back, the knee buckles in. And maybe it's on both sides. Maybe it's just on one side. But the function of the glute is to keep that knee pulled out. You know, we think about the knee and just look at the knee, but the position of the knee comes from the glute firing at the hip. So that's the number one way you can tell that there's an issue. I'm guessing you can't watch anybody walk and not decide in your head what is going on with them. Um, Jenny, what about you? So when you're working with more like everyday clients, um, what are, in addition to knee valgus, are, what are you paying attention to? Or is it things that are telling you? Is it things you see? What's going on? Yeah, so the kinetic chain works from the bottom up. I look a lot at feet, so specifically if they're pronated, turned out or turned in, um, if they're uh, collapsing their feet at all, the wear pattern on their shoes, um, and then, yeah, the way that their ankles, the way that they step when they're doing lunges or walking or moving on a treadmill, um, you can tell a lot from somebody's feet. And that's my thing. So walking around, you said it's hard to watch people do things. Absolutely. But for me, when I see people with foot turnout, I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> like that's my biggest thing. Yeah, so um, I know it's it's it is it's great. We're we're both talking about this, and so let's say let's say Chad, you know, you're seeing this knee valgus. What is you know one of the first uh, injuries that or pain? Like what if, when you're seeing this very predictive pattern in a lot of different people, um, what are you assuming is happening elsewhere in their body? I either assume that there's discomfort in the knee or the lower back. That's what I'm assuming, because when the glutes are not doing their job and that knee valgus shows that they're not doing their job, then there's going to be strain either above it or below it. So as I said, either the low back or the knee. Uh, of course, usually when I work with a patient, I already know coming in, like oh, my knee's been hurting me. So I'll look at the glutes. But if they say the low back's been hurting them as well, I will look at it. So those are the two key things. Makes total sense. Jenny, is that your uh, usual go-to in your head? 
Yeah, a lot of times, um, just like Dr. Waterbury said, uh, people will tell you when something's bothering them, or a lot of times a, a trained professional can look at them and we can say, oh, is your hip bothering you today? Or is your knee bothering you? And they're like, how did you know? And I'm like, well, <laughs> and you can break down everything that you saw that gave you that indication. And then even within a training session, you can actually address that with corrective exercise without making it like a whole deal. And one thing I love about the ISSA course that um, Chad was writing is that it doesn't need to be all corrective ex exercise all the time. Sometimes doing one or two things and keeping it simple is just as effective as doing an entire protocol every time you see somebody. Plus, it's more engaging. Yeah. So these are really predictable patterns that we're talking about, and it can stem from a number of different reasons. Um, Chad, with your clients or patients, is there like a certain sport where you see this more or less um, going on with the glutes and then obviously with the knees? It's so prevalent. I, I probably... Five years ago, I could have answered that easier. And now I'm just seeing it more and more prevalent than ever. So um, to sort of take your question down a different path, the thing that I see all the time that I've experienced, that's somewhat surprising if you think about it, is I'll work with someone who has competed in powerlifting or a collegiate or pro athlete who's very strong, like an NFL player. And this person might be able to deadlift 600 pounds. And you would think, wow, this person has really strong glutes. And mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm always shocked by how many people really don't have strong glutes, especially when they're coming to me with low back or knee pain. Um, the body is an amazing uh, compensatory machine. And, you know, these people, especially younger athletes, they're very resilient and they can work up to really big weights in the squat or the deadlift by making their hamstrings and their low back do more work than they should. And yeah, they're getting through it, but they're setting themselves up for a big injury risk if they don't address that glute strength. And that's where the corrective exercise will come in, get them, get some activation going, figure out what's going on. And then the glute uh, specialist course really helps a trainer learn how to build that strength that will carry over. Yeah. Jenny, how about you? Are, are you kind of seeing it with all your clients or is it one type of client more than another? Um, yeah, it's everybody who has it, but I work mostly with youth and college athletes um, and I see it in 90% of them. And it's to the point, like I've decided to step up and do more about it and really make that my focus, glute training, corrective exercise, the activation, um, because I've seen kids in four years of high school that I've known them go from starting off with weaknesses, but not addressing them throughout and tearing up their knees or their back and not being able to play in college or you know getting booted after their first year in college because they can't perform or they're injured all the time. Um, so yeah, I see it in boys, girls, um, young, old, it's its everybody, but it, it has to start when they're kids, in my opinion, um, if we can catch it that early so that they don't have these issues as they grow up and they know what to do to correct it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And I'm sure kind of talking about these corrective um, and maybe from either of your perspective, um, addressing these corrective issues, especially with younger athletes, I'm guessing that they don't totally understand and buy into it. And maybe their parents don't either. And maybe even their traditional strength and conditioning coaches don't either. So, um, I'll start with you, Chad, like, are you jumping, are you bouncing into any of that type of resistance from any of the parties involved? Um, no, I'm not. I mean, I think the glutes are becoming sort of mainstream in the sense of, people understanding their importance. Whereas like maybe 15 years ago, it wasn't as clear. And now with great research uh, by like some of my colleagues, like Professor Christopher Powers at USC and these other people have done really great research to show, you know, how important strength is in these muscles. So it's usually a pretty easy sell and everyone wants better glutes. For sure. Um, Jenny, anything, you know, you want to add to that? Or do you have parents that are like, why are you spending so much time with these band walks? Well, the kids ask that. They're like, oh, we haven't used equipment yet. And I'm like, well, you can't do a proper lunge, so I'm not going to have you jump on or off a box. Um, and a lot of times it's just getting their trust. And I always explain to them, I, I work with kids from 12 all the way up to 20, 22. And I explain to them from the beginning, I'm going to speak to you so you know what we're doing. I explain why we're doing things, what it's going to lead to, and where I want them to be at the end of the season. And with parents, the statistics, their their assessment numbers speak volumes. So I always do preseason assessments and uh, postseason assessments so they can see that this works. It really helped them improve their vertical, their broad jumps, their, you know, their approach jumps for volleyball, things like that. It all works. 
Fantastic. Chad, we talked about like, um, you know, knee pain and, you know, Jenny too, like knee pain, low pain, what low back pain, what are, are there any injuries that you've come across that, that, that you feel like are bizarre that somehow could be related to glute inactivation that isn't the norm? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, the body is one interconnected unit. You like, we were kids, we learned that the foot bones connected to the knee bone, the knee bones connected to the hip bone, you know, and all that. So um, I, it, I mean, nothing like shocking, but I'll see a lot of problems in someone's foot, for, for instance, on the opposite side when they have a really shut down glute on the other side. So if they have a really shut down glute on the right side, they might have some foot problems or ankle problems on the left side. Um, because of fascia and because of the kinetic chain and any problem in that link can have far reaching effects. And one example I'll give that might not be completely uh, specific to what you're talking about, but it gets the point across is they found years ago, they found a link between a fallen arch on one side. So let's say your right foot, you have like a flat foot, like a fallen arch, right? And if you have a fallen arch in your right foot, it's going to affect your knee position. So the affect your knee position is because of your hip. And now your hip has changed. And now the thoracic spine on the other side has to compensate. Now the shoulder has to compensate. And then when the shoulder compensates, the neck and the jaw compensates. What I'm getting at here is they found a link between a fallen arch on the right foot and TMJ in the left jaw. I mean, that's how far reaching this can go. That is crazy. So, I've never, I didn't hear that before. That's incredible. Yeah. So you can imagine if with, again, with fascia, which I talk about in the corrective exercise course, fascia links basically, basically seemingly unrelated body parts together. So if your right glute is not functioning correctly, I mean, you could see problems all the way up or down the chain because it's going to, it's going to affect the entire chain. Cause as I said, your body functions as one interconnected unit. It's so impressive. Um, Jenny, anything you want to add or examples that you've seen that have changed through uh, glute training for injury prevention? Absolutely. I'm very familiar with the, the work that uh, Chad was just talking about because I see it all the time in people who are lopsided up top or hunchy up top. Like It has everything to do with your glutes because it works its way up. But for me, again, feet, although I don't love feet, I pay attention to them quite a bit. But when kids, um, especially my athletes or uh, my clients that I work with, tell me that their shoes rub in certain spots, like on the outside of their foot, on where you would potentially have a bunion or on your toe, that again tells me that your foot position is off. And it, it contributes to what he was talking about fallen arches or something wrong with the way that your ankle or your foot is positioned works its way up through your calves, your hamstrings, your quads, your glutes. So I start with the feet and work up. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, and we're all on the same page, which is fantastic. Um, so in terms of injury prevention, and I know Chad, you've talked about a step down either as a test or as an exercise. Um, and Jenny, you were talking about some band walks, but is there ever uh, value in just having somebody perform the, you know, iso, like the isometric contraction uh, of the hip? At, sorry, I'm saying this wrong. A chat, can you figure out what I'm trying to say? Having a client do external rotation, abduction, and extension just to try to get it to fire, or do they need to do it in those compound movements? No, in the corrective exercise course, I talk about this, the importance of, of isolating those uh, fibers of the glutes, because the problem with the compound exercises I was referring to earlier is people find really great ways to work around it. They compensate. So on paper, it seems that, oh yeah, well, I don't need to do direct glute training because I do squats and deadlifts and lunges. And I would say, well, I can show you lots of really strong athletes in those movements who have terrible glute activation. So what you need to do is isolate those muscles and, and Aaron, what you're referring to is I really favor uh, in the early stages, isometric holds. So instead of doing reps, like most people probably seen a fire hydrant or something like that, instead of doing reps, doing a hold. And there's really great research that shows by doing those isometric holds, you get a greater impact on the mind muscle link. It's actually called technically called the cortico motor pathway, but it's just a fancy way of saying the mind muscle link, because what you're doing is you're forcing that muscle to stay on when you're doing reps, when you're coming in and out of a fire hydrant, 
which is a great exercise. It's great to do for reps. It has its place, but in the early, early stages when someone is really shut down and impaired, I like them to have to keep that intense contraction going the whole time. And they oftentimes feel that they can feel the muscle kicking on and off, even though they're holding their knee out. It's like, oh, I can feel it. And now it's start, it's like short circuiting. And then over time, it becomes a much smoother, stronger, continued contraction. Then you move into reps like Jenny has in her course, and then you integrate them into the, the compound multi-joint exercises. But to do it the opposite way, it's, it's, it's almost impossible because they can't even feel what they're supposed to feel. You can cue them until the cows come home and they don't even know what they're supposed to feel. Yeah, it was, you may have said this and I may have missed it, but how long would you have them start holding those contractions or is it just as long as it takes? Usually around 20 to 30 seconds is a good place okay. to start. And I might have them hold up to a minute depending on what I'm after, but usually around 20 to 30 seconds. And I would just say as a basic um, uh, reference frame, 20 to like 45 seconds is a good place to start. And it really helps increase that cortical motor pathway. And as I said, there's really excellent research to back that up. So that's and it's so many times I will say to people, uh, or people will say to me after they've done this, it's like, wow, like I've actually never felt my glutes in that spot before. I said, yeah, because they never had any reason to fire because you were compensating around it. And now we forced it to, it has no choice but to fire. That's the key. Totally true. Jenny, I see you nodding over there. Uh, tell me, are you doing any of those types of activation exercises with your clients? And is there anything where they're kind of like, oh my gosh, I thought what was sore was my glutes this whole entire time, but that's not what it was. Yeah, absolutely. Everything takes over when the right muscles don't fire. And this is just a huge shout out to Dr. Ward of Waterbury and corrective exercise is key for everything. And I'm immediately thinking of like strength and hypertrophy and the fact that the eccentric muscle action creates the most damage, which is how you build and get adaptation. So if you're not doing isometric holds and actually activating that muscle, then you can't do eccentric con uh, muscle action, um, let alone concentric, um, where you're actually moving the load. So um, yeah, it all goes together. And again, I said it last time, there's so much to know about corrective exercise that you can't afford. If, you're, if you are working with anybody, including yourself, even if you're just working with yourself, you cannot afford to not know corrective exercise. I'm sold. Uh, I was sold before, but now I'm like triply sold. So, all right, as we wrap it up, I was wondering if you guys have anything you want to add about like big myths that people have out there um, about glutes or injury prevention, just in general, anything, I'll start with you, Chad, anything that you would say to people out there, hey, they, they believe that X, Y, Z, that's a myth. Here's the truth. It's a great question. I already addressed it though. I sort of gave away the answer, but the, the biggest myth is that you can squat or deadlift your way to ultimate glute strength and performance. It's just, it's, it's really, it's, it very rarely would ever happen. I've never seen a person who didn't benefit by adding glute specialization exercises into his or her program. And I'm talking about people who even have high levels of performance, good glute activation and no pain in the low back or the knee. So people are just, they're good. You know, they're doing everything correctly, but by adding in these activation exercises, like I talk about, or the strengthening exercises like Jenny has in her course, everyone benefits. I mean, I've had super, super strong guys think that they've done everything they can for their glutes and they do these unique drills or holds or whatever. It's like, wow, like I didn't realize how much stronger my glutes could feel and how much better my mind muscle link is with those glutes now. And it's helping me jump higher, uh, sprint faster, deadlift more. So that's the main thing that I would say. How about you, Jenny? What, what, what's going on with myths and trainers or clients? Absolutely. I have two big ones. The first one is that you only do injury prevention when you're injured. Injury prevention is all day, every day. Um, that's the point. The point is to be pain-free and to stay that way. If you're not pain-free, the point is to get you there and then to remain that way. Um, and then regarding glute training, um, specifically for me, one myth is that you have to use all the bands and loops and all that kind of stuff that they're selling. While they're great tools, um, I don't know too many giant football players that want to use a booty band and like walk around and do stuff. But there's like, like we were talking about, there's isometric holds, there's other types of movements that can be done to engage your glutes. Those tools are great, but they are just that. They are tools. 
I appreciate it. I, I, I'm so glad we got you guys both on here. Um, two very intelligent people in the world of, of fitness um, and performance. So I appreciate you guys showing up and talking us through these different activities. I hope everybody is going to get out there and start activating their glutes. So um, thank you both. Corrective exercise and glutes, it's like peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> Absolutely.